Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to another episode of Brandon's Comedy Bomb Show. Today's guest, you've seen him on NBC Superstore. You've seen him on uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Give it up for the hilarious Nico Santos, y'all. Nico! Hi. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank okay. you so much. Welcome, man. Like you, thank you for coming on the show. Of course. Wait, where are you? Uh, I am in my uh, my studio, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, you got a brick wall behind you. I'm like, are you in a comedy club right now? Um, they, this is my <laughs> this is uh, Brandon's comedy show uh, studio that I that I built. Uh, Amazing. For this show, so I had to give people, you know, this is what this is what it feels like when we're on stage. I appreciate you being here. Um, Thanks for having me. Of course, yeah. Um, so first of all, let's just let's start this off by um, first uh, just asking, where are you from, Nico? Where are you originally from? Uh, originally, I'm from the Philippines, okay. uh, born and raised in, in Manila, Philippines, and I moved to Oregon when I was a teenager. I was about 15 or 16 when I moved to Oregon. Wow. Um, and then kind of just made my way down from Oregon to San Francisco. Uh, to Los Angeles and San Francisco is where I started um, stand up comedy. So. Okay. Oh, so you started in the Bay? Yeah, I started in the Bay. I started in San Francisco. I, I moved to San Francisco with the intent of doing stand up comedy. You know, um, uh, when I was in, in going to college in Oregon, I went to college in a very small, uh, small town. Yeah. And I, um, I, uh, I studied theater. And I, I really thought that my path was going to be in theater. Yeah. And um, I was kind of sort of disillusioned by, uh, by my experience in college and my experience in that small town. I even worked in a professional theater uh, in, that, in that town. Um, I worked for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival doing wardrobe for them. Uh -huh. And um, my, it was one of the actors that I was in charge of dressing who was like, you're, he's, he was like, you're, you're really funny. You should like, why don't you try stand up? Yeah, yeah. And, it had never dawned on me. Like I'd always been a fan of stand up. Yeah. It just ne I never thought about that. Oh yeah, it's something that I could like pursue until yeah. he said it. And I was like, you know what? I will do that. Yeah, I think I can do it. I can dabble I think I will. Yeah. And then, uh, so that's, that's, I left, I left that one horse town and, and <laughs> moved to San Francisco with the intent of pursuing stand up, but was so scared that I didn't do anything for about three and a half years. Wow. So. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. so moved here. And so, and then, so how many years exactly have you been uh, now doing stand up? How, how long have you been actually doing stand up? Would you say? I well, I'm 41, and I I started. I went to my first open mic at like 25. Okay. Okay. 25, 26. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not good at math. So 41 minus 20. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, about sixteen, yeah. about sixteen years, about sixteen, yeah, fifteen, fifteen years, I say, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it took me like I would say, you know, from from starting in open mics, I'd say five years into it, then I I was like featuring. Then you okay? You were like five by yeah five years into it. Then I was getting feature work, nice. um, and and all that. So, nice. but you know, I mean, now the bulk of my career is um is in acting and actually i've sort of put stand up sort of in the back burner i still right. do it obviously but not as often um because i i uh, i just sort of like the the acting thing took off more than the stand before the stand-up did so yeah yeah the stand yeah. but it's great because now the good thing is now you can you can uh parlay you know uh your the acting and parlay that into you know headlining um doing your own stuff when you have the time more because i know I know with Superstore, it takes up a lot of time for you, so. Yeah, I mean, Superstore, I mean, like, takes up eight months out of my year. Right. And, you know, I, I get a week off every four weeks, every three weeks. But, you know, sometimes the last thing I want to do is go to no, in, Indiana, you know, on, on the right, one, right. one yeah. week off that I have. Yeah, no. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So uh let's just kick let's get right into it man so uh let me let me say give me your your most memorable bombing experience uh on stage Mem the most memorable bombing experience i would have to say uh that just still produces like sweats right. when i think when i think about it <laughs> is, this probably happened about 10 
10, 11 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I had just moved to Los Angeles. Um, I was so broke and I was just get, trying to get whatever, whatever stand up gig I can get. Right. Cause you know, I was like, if I can just get paid doing my art, then I've made it. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember getting um, a college gig and you know, and a lot of these college gigs, it's just, it's just all inclusive. They just give you like, here's the check, but you got to figure out your own, your own travel, your own hotel and all that stuff. And I remember that I was so broke that even though it seemed like a good check for, for, yeah. for a comedy gig, um, I was probably only going to come out maybe $300 in the positive. Wow. And this was this this gig was in New York. I was in LA. Oh my gosh! So I was so like, I I gotta take this gig because I I just gotta you gotta come out in the positive. I gotta find a buddy pass. Uh, somebody to <laughs> <set> help. Like <laughs> that is exactly what I did. <laughs> I called I called I called a friend of mine who I knew I worked for Alaska Airlines, and um, she uh, she yeah she was a friend of mine. She she also did comedy in San Francisco. And I just uh, called her up and I was like, girl, I mean, is there any way you can help me out here? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she, you know, I had given, I had given her some stage time before when I, when I had shows in, in San Francisco. So she was like, yeah, totally. You know, she, she gave me a buddy pass. Um, and then I called up a friend of mine who, who has an apartment in New York um, and, and crashed at his couch. Uh -huh. Um, and I was like, and I didn't have money to be in New York cause I didn't get that. I, I wasn't going to get that check until I got, I did the, so, until I right, so after did the gig. Yeah. So I was, I was probably in New York. I, I wanted to get some stage time before the gig. So I was crashing on my friend's couch, flew there on a buddy pass. I probably had five, $10 a day to live off of. In right. New York City, I had budgeted, so I was just eating off like halal carts, street right. meat, like every day. <laughs> um, but this gig was for a college. Um, they told me the venue, and it said so and so theater. Right. So I was like, "Oh, okay, um, I'm in a theater. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm doing. I'm, you know, I got paid to headline, right. so I, my, I was con contracted to do 45 minutes to an hour." Okay. Um, and they said it was for this theater. And, I, and I'm, I'm there thinking before I got there that I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, this is going to be great. There's probably going to be like 400 people, three, right. you know, 300 people minimum. Right. Yeah. I get there. And first of all, the people I'm communicating with just were not good about sharing details. I, I, it takes me a while to find the place. I, I didn't know. There was like multiple people I was trying to connect with. And then I get there at the theater, and what it was is uh, a, a club in the college that that was having like a like a celebration, like a dinner. Right. And they were having it at the lobby of the theater, so I was the entertainment for the club. The club. This, for this organization. Wow. And uh, at the lobby of their theater, and um, you know they had like these these banquet tables set up and eating they were eating I, I didn't have an opener so it was just like all right let's, let's just let's, no let me introduce just, no warm-up it was just like you do your thank own crowd you, work <laughs> thank you all for being here now we have some comedy provided by nico santos and i was like oh all right let me let me do this i like just think of the paycheck think of the paycheck right and there you know there were a young crowd you know a lot of my audience is mostly women um, so when I see a lot of women uh, in, in the crowd, I, I feel pretty confident that they're like, oh, okay, this is going to go well for me. I them over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mostly women, young women. Uh, say my opening joke, crickets. Oh. And, just, and just, I was just like, oh, my God. And like. How many people were in, were in, the, in, this, in the lobby? I would say 30 tops. Oh. In, in, a, in a huge lobby and as you know when you're performing you know when, when you're at an enormous space yeah. like all that energy just sort of like has to go somewhere yeah it carries right yeah, yeah so it, it just it, it was just not the idea the only thing that would have made this worse if 
if this was during the daytime and outdoors. Thank right. God it was in the evening and in this <laughs> space. But it was, it was not the ideal space. It was this huge, huge lobby. They had set up these tables. They were like eating while I was performing. They were kind of talking through oh, while I was so performing. Nervous. And I just sort of like, you know, like did a joke. And, and usually, you know, as a comic, you're going to be like, I, okay, I got I to win them over somehow. I got to win them right, over somehow. Right, right. And you're just going through your Rolodex of jokes. And, and every time I tried to, to sort of like dig out of the hole, nothing, no response. It was like, just. You could hear them like you could just hear like the the clanging of the silverware and like the, oh. and like the <clears throat> oh. like the the clearing of the throats. Yeah. And and twenty mi- twenty twenty minutes into my forty five to an hour set, I was just like, I basically just like threw my hands up in the air. I'm like, I'm getting paid, <laughs> whether or not y'all are enjoying this. So. You guys might as well, you know, come with me and you be be right here with me and, and try to enjoy it. They didn't like that, so oh, okay. y'all yeah. respond. Yeah, and then um, this was like a, I, th- I think it was like a Catholic university or some sort of religious university because there was a priest or a reverend or some a man of the cloth. Right, right, right. <laughs> who was there? Who was there in some sort of like um, advisory capacity? And I was just doing so bad that I I was like fuck it I I kind of like looked at it looked at the priest and was just like oh hey what are you doing here aren't these kids a little too old for you um oh. and uh, <laughs> ah, best crowd work ever at that point they were just like oh no oh no 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 and I'm telling you I just had to like I mean, I was sweating and just, I could not. And you know, and I don't know about you, but like when I have to do like a long set, like 45 to an hour, it, you know, like 15, 20 minutes, easy. I don't even need right. to look at my notes. I have, you know, I have it in my head. Set, I can just yeah. go, go do it. But if it's, if it's longer than 30 minutes, I, I really do have to think about what I'm going to say, what how it's structured. Happen. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Jokes, what segues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's, you know, 45 to an hour is a very long, is, is a long set. So I, uh, you know, I was just sort of like sweating bullets trying to go through my act and be, and, and, and just sort of looking at my watch. And the minute it went to 45, I was like, good night. Thank you. Oh, wow. Uh, so you're trying to like push through because sometimes we'll do that. You like would just push through the material. You're like, just you have to the material. Yeah, because, I mean, because you're not getting paid until, you know, you're contracted to do <laughs> yeah. 45. You got to do the time, if, so you can get the paycheck. Oh. And man, I was just like, this is so. It it, it was just. Oh. Ugh. And, and and to this day, like this is why I don't I don't like doing college gigs. Right. Um. You know, Jerry Seinfeld was like, oh, I don't do college gigs because, like, they're so, like, sensitive or whatever. And, and I find that to be true, but also just, like, it, it tends to be a fickle, a fickle audience because I, I find, like, a, I, don't, I don't know, it may be different. This is obviously 10 years ago. But, you know, a, a college, like, a lot of college kids, they're not necessarily, like, the comedy club going crowd, per se. Right. They're still trying to figure out, like, who they are. I mean, you know, like, it's very, they're in a specific place in their life right now. When it comes yeah, to- exactly. And in that environment, you know, uh, you know, and as you know, I was the same way in college, sort of like uh, finding out things that I that I stand for, that I that I will defend, right. yes. and 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 what what you, you know, who you really are as a person. So anytime somebody will come in that will knock, you know, sort of like off- offend that sensibility about you. Yeah, I mean, they were just like, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> It was, it was, it was bad. I, ugh, man. Oh, oh my God. So did they, still, did they, was there any booze? Did you clap? Did they clap or anything when you, when you left? Like, I oh mean, it was, it was, it was like polite. Like a. Polite clap. It is. Yeah. Over. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, at that point, I had just moved to, to Los Angeles to make a go of my career. And I was like, you know. I was like, oh, I booked a college, a college gig. Oh, right. yeah, I just moved to Los Angeles. Oh, things are looking up. This is great. Right, right. <laughs> oh, man. It was not. Oh, 
Oh. It did not do wonders for my ego. Oh, good. so so after that, oh, that's a tough bomb. Ooh, that's a that's a that's an L that takes to the chest right there. Yeah. Ooh. So I mean, and, and that's the thing. It's like when you're when you're killing, when you're doing stand up and you're killing, it is, as you know, like the best feeling in the world. Right. Like you step off the stage and you feel fucking invincible. Right. Like, like you had just done like an eight ball of cocaine and you're just like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. But then when you bomb, it is, it is like, you just like, I should just kill myself. Cause I, I should reconsider this. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, so how long after did it take you to, to get back up on the horse? How long after you, when you bombed, did it take you to be like, all right, let me get back on stage? Well, you know, I, I had stayed in New York for a, for a couple more days after that gig as well. Yeah. And um, I, I just went to an open mic, you know, and, and, got, and, and, and did pretty well at an open mic. Yeah. Um, and all you need to, to wash away that feeling is just another good set. It's another good set. That's it. Yeah, because you, because you know that it's not, you know, especially since I was doing a long set with, with a lot of varied material, I know that it's not the material because right. I've done, you like, know, the material has killed before. Yeah. Like I've gotten standing ovations doing these same jokes. Right. I know this shit is funny. Right. It's just not hitting with this crowd for whatever reason. Right. And, and there was nothing I could do to, to sort of lift myself out of that hole. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. Ugh. Oh, wow. Yo, that is hilarious. Yeah. That's 45 crazy. minutes of silence and then sort of like offending the priest. Oh, oh gosh. That is, I, I have to say, though, if you were ever to do crowd work and there's a priest in the audience, that is the <laughs> best way to just go at it. Because who, how often are you going to get a priest in the audience? You got, I know. You got to address it. Yeah. You know? And also, I was like, here I am at a religious college talking about being openly gay and, and, right. and, and, and my material. And I'm like, and a priest walks in. And, 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 and when I started sort of talking about who I was and, and being, and not even like dirty, you know, I wasn't even talking about like gay sex, but just sort of like me right. as the person. Right. I could tell that there was some uncomfortable moments in the audience. And I was all like, why'd y'all hire me? <laughs> right. Which is great for a comedian. You're like, oh, I love it. For me, I eat that up. I'm like, oh, when it feels uncomfortable, I'm like, yes. Yeah. So, like, let's dig into this, you know? I mean, it's, there, are, there are times I'm like, oh, you don't like that? Well, let me, let me. Right, talk. yeah, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and twist this knife because this is all you get for the next 45 uh -huh. minutes, so. Wow, that is, oh my God, that is so great. That is a first for me to anyway say that I had a priest in the audience and I did crowd work. That's great. <laughs> oh, Nico, I cannot thank you. Oh, man, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. That is a great bomb story. Um, uh, before, before we get out of here, uh, I just, there's a couple questions I always ask every comedian uh, just, just, you know, in closing. Um, so, uh, first question is, um, what important comic lesson would you tell your younger self if you had to go back in time? I, I would say, you know, I, I really miss like in the beginning where when you're first pursuing stand up, where you were just fearless and excited. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as you, you know, sort of like get further and further into the business and, and become a professional comedian, mm -hmm. a little bit of that goes away. You know, because because you're now looking at it as as a, as a business, as as a livelihood, and and I think I think in the beginning, you know, like I was definitely more fearless. Yeah. About what I wanted to talk about and how I wanted to approach uh, topics, mm -hmm. and and I and I wish I, I wish um, I would just tell my younger self to to never lose sight of that, right. because because it can be easy to lose sight of once. Once you start working as a comedian. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's really great. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the, the last question I'll ask is, um, if you had to leave one final piece of advice for the next generation of comics, what would it be? Um, 
I would say like for anybody sort of like pursuing a, a career in comedy, you know, I started out as a comedian, uh, as a stand-up comedian, but I'm now more known as an actor and I do the bulk of my work as an actor, right. which is not where I thought I would end up. Right. And, and I was actually, so I, I just watched uh, Tom Segura's latest special and he had a bit about sort of like, he believes in, in, in supporting everybody pursuing their dream um, as long as you realize that I, I, I'm, I'm going to mess this up, but okay. it, like, but, but he was basically saying that like, like your final, like where you end up may not be where you thought you were headed. Mm. And, and, and that's certainly true for me. Yeah. And I think it's important as not only as comedians, but as artists in general who work in, in performing arts, um, that, you know, just focus on the journey yeah. Um, and, and the goal is to become a professional, however that may look like. We right. may end up as writers, as producers, as dramatic actors, as comedic actors, as improvisers. Um, you know, but there, there are many ways to sort of stay within the world uh, that we first pursue. Stand up was my entryway mm -hmm. to where I am now. But just focus on the journey. Yeah. You know, like when I first started, I thought I was going to be, you know, end up like performing in stadiums and, and being like the huge, you know, yeah. household name in comedy. Yeah. And, and I'm not, and, and I don't regret the work that I'm doing now. I'm so happy with the kind of work I'm doing now. It's just not what I pictured when I first started doing comedy. Right. Wow. Wow. That's dope. I love it. I love it. Yo, Nico, that is so awesome. Man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, before Thanks we for having me, just uh, if you wanted to tell people where they can find you, social media wise, and uh, anything you have coming up next to, to look forward to. Um, you can find me on on Instagram and Twitter at Nico Santos. Um, you know, you can catch up on Superstore on Hulu, seasons one through five, um, and we are filming the sixth season of Superstore um, this coming fall. So. Uh, we have a sixth season coming up, so watch out for that in the fall. Congratulations, yeah. Nico. Thank you so thank much you. Man, for coming on the show. I appreciate you and uh, continued success in your career, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's great seeing you, man. Talk to you soon. Bye, Nico.